can you feel like you bring to Bell to Bell? Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Andy Murray from What Culture, and you're watching Tom Talks Rubbish. Subscribe below. What's going on guys? It's your boy, Tom Talks Rubbish, and stand back for another interview. This time, I'm joined by Warren Hayes from Bell to Bells and The Warren Hayes Show. So welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So if we take this back to the beginning, where does Warren first discover wrestling? Oh, geez. Okay. The beginning, beginning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to go um, back to the beginning and then go to present day. Sort of right, yeah, exactly. You know, but not the beginning, beginning. You know, we're not going like. Well, at first there were dinosaurs. Not that. Yeah, beginning, no, right? no, 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 no. Okay. Like you're beginning in your wrestling fandom. Okay, okay. Um, I started very young. Like I'm quite old. So, um, you know, I I started watching wrestling, um, when there were still territories, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, on the tail end. But there were still territories. I, I, you know, I live in Canada. I live in in the French part of uh, of Canada and Quebec. So. I was exposed early on to uh, Lutte Internationale, or International Wrestling is what the promotion was called. Essentially, the Montreal Territory. Um, and uh, it, was a, it's been, it was one that, would, that had been around for a few years. It was owned and operated by a couple of people over the years. But, you know, essentially Andre the Giant and Gino Brito and Dino Bravo. Those were the guys who had this all set up. Uh, and that was essentially broadcast on the uh local montreal station essentially where you you know the sunday mornings when i'd come back from going kicking and screaming to church <laughs> i'd come back and and uh and watch uh and watch uh those guys there and uh that that's essentially how i started watching my first real wrestling hero was uh rick martell before he went way before he was the model, even he was known as Ricky Martel. There was a Y to it because he was a yeah. baby face. You yeah. put Y's, you know, for baby faces at the end. Yeah. You want it to sound like cheerful. It's not Rick. It's Ricky. Yeah. Um, I actually met him once really? at a food drive. Yeah, no, no, at a food at a local food drive at some point. Uh, he uh, he, you know, one of these things. My mom would volunteer, and she brought me as well. So we, you know, you're pa you're packing these bags you know one of these food drives for the holidays yeah. right and he shows up he like he comes in as a you know a guest uh and he's you know he's packing some stuff in and my mom sort of says why don't you go talk to him I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 i cannot but but eventually i do go up and i say hey you know you know little kid hello i'm a big fan you know and i don't remember what he told me but he was super cool i think he said something like stay in school you know something like that you know, to, you yeah. know something basic but you know he 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 was a super nice guy and uh so yeah essentially that That's you know cool. that met is cool, him, met him but you know i wasn't talking about you know you know the number of bumps he had been taking or you know how, how's your contract status i wasn't asking shit like that no nah, <laughs> he was just a kid and it was like wait i just met one of my heroes that's pretty yeah cool. exactly exactly yeah so how do you then become exposed to the bigger promotions like wbf for example oh they buy the promote they buy the territory out <laughs> that's what they that's to how i got exposed to peel the curtain back We'll record. This is the third time we're trying to record this, and every time Warren has told me that story, I have just cracked up laughing because I find that so funny. But it, it's funny because it's true. That's the thing. It's like one day I'm watching, you know, Lutte Internationale. I'm seeing they were affiliated with the NWA, so I'm seeing like Ric Flair and you know Barry Windham show up on TV, and next thing you know, I, I you know, it's like. The superstar de la WWF, you know, it's like the WWF, WWF superstars, right? Um, yeah. And it's Saturday mornings now, if I'm not mistaken. They, they, they move the slot from the Sundays to the Saturdays. And, and all of a sudden, it's like all these guys and it's all new and the production's different and it's no longer in Montreal. Like it's, you know, and then, you know, Hulk Hogan and all these people. And 
that's essentially how it happened. Like from one one day I'm watching I'm watching one thing and the next day it's it, it's WWF and well, you know, the, that's how that's how the story goes, right? The very localized yeah. French version of the WWF, but nonetheless, that's what I got. You talked about it being a very localized French version there. But what are some things that maybe either didn't translate from French to English or hmm. and or did? Or maybe what are some things that the French audience got to see that the uh, rest of the world did not? Well, we got uh, we, we, that uh, one thing that Vince was very smart at during uh, at that time was he understood that Montreal was a very was a, a huge wrestling town and it still is today. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, people love their wrestling and there's a, Hey, you know, we contributed a lot of, to a lot of wrestling superstars over the years. Still, from to, Montreal. This day. Still to this day, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, uh, 2.0, you're thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. You know, I'll yeah. expect, uh, I'll expect cards in the mail. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, still to this day. And, and, and back then he understood that it was very important to, if you wanted to maintain that audience that he had to create a localized product. Uh, and that was fairly easy for him because, you know, second in command was Pat Patterson back then. Um, and Pat is from Montreal or at least from the Montreal area. So very easy for him to, to, to produce some, some exclusive content. So like, for instance, we didn't get like our commentary table was headed by Edouard Carpentier, who was a legendary French wrestler. Uh, so he, uh, he would call the matches. The matches were basically dubbed, you know, whoever was doing it. I don't know who was, was it Gorilla Monsoon who was doing uh, Superstars at the time? I, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't, say it was Gorilla and Heenan, but well, don't, did, don't quote yeah. me on that. Well, we didn't get that on Superstars. You know, so we, we, did, we didn't get that. We got, we got our own version. Uh, and there's a lot of content that we just flat out didn't get. Like we didn't get Piper Spit, for instance. That was mm. something that was completely cut from the show. But, but, but instead... What we got was Pat Patterson doing his own little talk show segment, which he called The Brunch. Le Brunch de Pat Patterson. And it was basically him just like at a, sitting behind a very regular, normal table, you know, with a, you know, some doilies and cups of coffee and whatever fruit he could get off of catering, you know, just, just put it around there, mm. you know, on a beige wall behind them with the WWF logo and, and he's interviewing wrestlers, right? So he's doing Piper's shtick in a such that he's the heel and he's interviewing wrestlers. But his twist is that he's speaking to the, to the audience in French, right? Because it's a French audience that's tuning in. But he's asking questions in English to the wrestlers. So he would ask the question, the wrestler would answer, and he would translate, right? Yeah. But he translate whatever they said into pure garbage, you know, and most of the wrestlers idea. And he had like, you know, Davy Boy Smith, Tito Santana, Captain Lou Albano, uh, Junkyard Dog. Like, you know, he'd have the, the, the whole the whole nine yards. If they were if they were baby faces, he'd make fun of them. And he'd say, you know, he'd ask Lou Albano. So how does it feel to be back in Montreal? And Albano would be like, oh, it's great. You know, it's fantastic. I love coming to Montreal. And then he'd turn around to the camera and in French, he'd say, so this fat son of a bitch right here just said that he hates Montrealers. He thinks the French Canadians are dumb, you know, and he's, so he'd trash them. Right. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was a really fun, it, it was a really funny segment. I'm not going to lie. And because of course the wrestlers, most of the wrestlers didn't speak a lick of French unless he was talking to, you know, the Rougeau brothers or, uh, you know, the, or Dino Bravo, you know, of course, then they, then they'd all pal around, right. Then everything would be cool, but it, it was a really funny gimmick. Um, and it's really something that, that, that stuck out for me at that period that I know, like most people that I talked to, they had no idea this, this, this happened. And it was really a, uh, somewhat of a cultural phenomenon because everyone, I, I, I'm, I promise you, Tom, even people who didn't watch wrestling knew what Pat Patterson's brunch was. They yeah. knew that because it was, it was just really funny. He was making fun of people straight to their faces in a language that they couldn't understand. And it was, it was just great. It was so basic elementary, but it worked. It was great. Do you think those segments 
say for example they did a they did piper's pit but just dubbed it over in french and they did pat patterson's brunch but just dubbed it over in english you think they would have translated as well or do you think no no i don't think it would have i know what i'm trying to say i just can't think of the word I, I I I think the Pat Patterson stuff for the, the, over like dubbing the Pat Patterson stuff wouldn't have worked because it was very very sometimes the expressions he'd use when speaking to the French audience were very very you know local even some Montreal expressions you know things that even if let's say you were a French a native French speaker let's say from Marseille or Paris yeah. you, st- you wouldn't quite understand what he's talking about you know so I don't think it would translate really well. Um, and overdubbing the Piper's Pit things stuff, well, it's like maybe because there's a lot of important angles, right, that that happened on Piper's Pit that we never got to see, you know, that we had that 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 were explained or that we saw in packages or whatever, like vignettes. Like, but for example, you know, you told me off camera was you never saw the coconut thing. From no, Piper's I never pit, saw right? the Jimmy Snuka coconut. No, I've never, I never saw the Jimmy Snook, Snuka coconut because we had Pat Patterson making fun of people instead. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's essentially it. So, do you feel like there's anything that maybe you missed out on because it, there was some localized stuff? I hope that question made sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yes, yes, there is things that that I missed out because. The, the duality in all of this is that in the meantime, it's because, you know, I, I, I spoke both languages back then, right? I'd speak French and English. My mother's Irish. My father's French Canadian. Mm-hmm. So, so I grew up speaking both. So I was exposed to, to French stuff and, and English stuff and a lot of American television as well. So on one hand, you know, we're getting, you know, the, you know, the, the French version of superstars, the French Canadian version of superstars for being really, really precise here. We're getting that, but in the meantime, I have access, let's say, to Saturday night's main event on NBC, you know, at 11.30 at night on, uh, on uh, uh, quarterly on Saturdays, right? So, so you know, the, I, while watching the American product, I'm like, I know I'm missing out on stuff. Like when I'm yeah. watching, when I'm watching the, the, the American production, I should say, no, no, I'm missing out on stuff. I didn't know about this bit of the angle. I didn't, you know, so once, once I was able, once things started to shift and we started to get, you know, Monday Night Raw and Nitro and so on and so forth, then I felt, I felt like I was in control. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, now I'm getting everything unfiltered. There's not like this, this French production buffer between what's happening and what I'm watching. I'm getting, I'm getting the real deal here. Do you think, uh, I suppose, would the word be nationalized segments would work today? Or do you think because of the way of the internet, they would be like too almost like they would be too much to almost like available. So it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, you're asking if, if it, it would still be, if it's still pertinent to do localization? Yeah, like say something like Pat Patterson's Brunch, for example, would something like that work today? If, or do you think because of YouTube and stuff, it might not work? No, I think it'd still work. I think, you know, if I, I think it, I mean, they still have, you know, they still have Spanish commentary, right? You know, uh, uh, and for the longest time, WWE had localized commentary tables and, you know, multiple languages. Um, I think, I, I still think it's extremely uh, 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 useful uh, to do it. I think it, I, th- I think it would still work because, it, despite the fact that it's big and it's national and so on and so forth, people still want to feel like, you know, the product is speaking to them. Right. I think it would still work. I think, it, I, I think there would be room to have like something to draw new viewers in. And then and if people want to go explore on YouTube or through streaming services or whatnot, I think there's still room for localization. Absolutely. Who do you think, who could you see on a current roster, uh, roster, you know what I'm trying to say. We're all start doing a localized segment. Uh, depends on the market, I guess, you know, because like you mean wrestlers doing like commentary and, and, and things like that? No, no. Like, for example, with Pat Patterson's branch, pick yeah. a wrestler from the current uh, rosters that you could see having their own segment in their, in their oh. own language sort of thing. 
Well, okay. Well, look, if we want to go down, like, let's say we wanted to do something kind of like that. Matt Menard would be fantastic at, uh, at doing that in AEW. Like he, he, like he has, he has the comedy. He has the timing. He's bilingual as well, speaks French and English. So that would be fantastic. And, you know, Kevin Owens has teased that a couple of times over the years when he was, he'd come out and start doing promos in French, especially when he, when the, when the shows, when the, uh, the, the, the TV tapings were in Montreal, he'd come out speaking in French and, you know, just to, to tease a little bit, the fact that no one else is understanding what, what, what I'm talking about. So that would be, I mean, the talent is there. The talent is absolutely there. It's a question of, do we want, do we want to invest into it? Because the thing is that, you know, this is time, it's money. The French Canadian market is significantly smaller than many other markets out there. So it depends if you wanted to make a serious push, like honestly, if AEW wanted to make a serious push into, uh, into Montreal and into, into the Quebec market, you use your guys like 2.0 to, to, to make it happen. Cause they, they really have the chops to make it happen. Fair enough. But as we continue on your wrestling journey, how did you get involved with wrestling media? Um, if I'm not mistaken, two, around 2018, if my memory is correct, I, I uh, submitted my, um, an, uh, my, 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 an application, I guess, or my, you know, my uh, services to um, the Daily DDT, the fan-sided yeah. uh um, website to write, uh, write articles. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. It was uh, Joe Soriano, who was the um, editor in chief at the time, my first boss in wrestling. Uh, and he gave me a chance and let me, let me go ahead and do it. And that was, that was pretty cool. A couple of months in, I'm like, um, I, you know, I, and I was listening to a lot of podcasts, watching a lot of YouTubers as well, like, you know, going in raw and the, uh, you know, the cultaholic guys were still at the, uh, what culture, uh, you know, so, you know, there was a lot of stuff going around. I'm like, mm, yeah, you know, I, you know, I'd like to dip my toes in that. So one day I'm on Twitter and I say that as if that's an exceptional thing, you know, one day, this one day I'm on Twitter. Um, and, uh, and, and Sean Ross Sapp, a fight. He tweeted something to the effect of, does anyone want to join me for a great American bash? 95 96 retro review i don't remember which one exactly and, I, and so i i see it like immediately and i'm like okay and i drop into his dms and i'm like sure i'll do it and he says okay cool uh he says okay cool do you have the wwe network to watch i say yes he says do you have a quality working microphone and i said yes i have a quality working microphone he says cool we'll record on friday and i said cool and i step out of the house to go buy a quality working microphone <laughs> <laughs> to make sure I, I could do it. Uh, and, uh, and it's been, uh, so that's how, that's how I started. I did this one. It was on Fightful Select. Mm. Um, that, that's where he'd do the, the, the retro reviews. And that's how we started. That's how, that's how I started. And then a couple of months later, he offers me a spot to do, to cover NXT, NXT UK, uh, and 205 Live on Select as well, continuing. And as we continue to do the, the retro reviews as well, then he brings me up on main and start doing the post shows, uh, raw SmackDown. No, no, it was the SmackDown one, not the raw one. Uh, and then the, the, the Wednesday night wars and so on and so forth. So yeah, that was, uh, uh, that's essentially how I got started. And then in the meantime of all of that, I'll, while that's going on, I'm like, well, I'm going to do my own thing on the side. So I start up my, my own podcast, the Mr. Warren Hayes show. And uh, so I started that up pretty much at the same time. So I had all these things going around. So, you know, I figured if I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in hard. You yeah. Know? In for a penny, in for a pound, which is a big saying in my country. There you go. And, and, and since, since we're all part of the, uh, the, the confederation, not the confederation, the, uh, uh, what's the word? The um, European? No, 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 no. You, you the, like, uh, um, you know, Commonwealth. Great Britain and Canada, the Commonwealth. There you go. I understood that reference. My mother okay. used to watch Coronation Street. Oh, okay. Fair there enough. So what is something that doing the reviews with Sean, because you're learning from one of the greats from your startup, correct? So what is something you learned from him that you still use in your podcasting or uh, YouTubing or creation to this day? Um, 
Well, I, I, I think the first thing is, um, the, it's to, you know, transmit your love of wrestling, transmit your passion for what you're watching. Right. I don't think, um, I, I, I don't think there's anything worse than, you know, people who don't have that fire as they're talking in or as they're trying to yeah. convey it. I think that's, that's a big part of it, but also do it in a way where you also do it while you're, you know, you, sh- you, you, you know what you're talking about, right. To show, to, to show off that you're, you're not a complete dunce that there, you do have some form of expertise, I guess, for lack of a better word. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a, it, it's a combination. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a combo that you, that's not necessarily easy to master because, you know, Sean had this way of breaking down a match that isn't necessarily blow by blow, but bringing out the highlights and, you know, and that comes from understanding match structure, you know? So it's something that as you go along, you know, you, 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 you dive more into it. You understand how matches are put together. Well, these are the highlights that I'm going to bring out. This is what I'm going to pull out from the match without doing a, you know, like you do written reviews, you can do blow by blows, right? Yeah. But those are written, right? You don't necessarily want someone for 20 minutes, you know, just to tell you, this is the move that happened. Being this like, move, this, this move, is the this move, move that happened. This is why, yeah. it happened. do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's more like, you know, this happened and it was awesome because it was executed in this way, so on and so forth. And, you know, Sean had the training, uh, has, you know, has his wrestling training. So that also helps out. I had books. I have years of experience watching, you know, I, diving into different types of wrestling where I can. But but that definitely does help hone, you know, that it, did, it, did, it really did help hone my uh, my approach to uh, to, to talking about wrestling online. Cause I, I think, I think there, you know, there's, there's, there's absolutely an audience for people who, you know, who just want to sit around and talk about, you know, oh, this wrestler is great. And, you know, oh, they do great things and I love their gear and so on and so forth. And that, that, that's fantastic. But I think there is, there's also an audience for analysis, like really like breaking down a match, breaking down the implications of a match or a card or a pay-per-view and diving into the business side I think that's I think that's really really important as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that that's pretty much what I. That's all. I mean, you get a lot of stuff, and you know, fightful. Everything is live, and it's I, you know, and I was doing a couple of shows per week on top of mine. So you know, you pick up a lot of stuff, you learn a lot. You, it's a lot of on the job training, and and you know, Sean just lets you go. Sean is like you know. I trust you. Just go right ahead. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of good there. So then good how, does bell to, how does Bell to Bell come into your life? Well, Bell to Bell comes around because I met my current fiance uh, while we were at both writing at Fansided at the Daily DDT. We were both writers there. Uh, so that's how I that's how I met Kristen Ashley. And uh, Wait, she's your she, fiance? Yes, she is. Yes. Wow. I yes, never yes, knew yes. this. Yes, yes, she is. And, um, and she wanted to, uh, she wanted to bring this, um, she, she, she basically wanted her, her own site, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to promote women's wrestling, talk about women's wrestling, just a spot for that. Uh, and well, I mean, that's it. Like it, women's wrestling has also been a, uh, a, a, a big part of why I I'm, I'm very gung ho about modern wrestling these days. I think women's wrestling has never been on a, you know, mainstream level, because we could talk about AJ, uh, AJPW, um, AJW, uh, quite a bit, but, uh, you know, as far as mainstream wrestling goes, like it, it, women's wrestling has never been more exciting than it is today. So, yeah. uh, she wanted to put this together. She wanted to write, she wanted to bring collaborators around. And I was like, look, you know, I, I can definitely help out and worked out a, some, uh, some co-ownership. We also have Lauren was also a, 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 the third owner of, uh, of Bell to Bells. And uh, that was, our, you know, the missions changed, you know, just like anything, sites evolved and things change. You know, at first we were very, very focused on news, but then we're like, no, you know, I think we're more useful to being like advocates, right? Yeah, being, yeah, totally. Promoting women, women's wrestling, as opposed to like, everyone does it, right? It's like, you know, Paige's contract with WWE is up. Well, oh, hooray. I, I mean, it's good news, you know, it's, it, and it's news, but everyone does it. We're a fairly new site. New, we're a fairly new news site. I know what um, you meant. 
Yeah, you know, we're not going to get the traction that, you know, Wrestling Inc. or Fightful or, the, you know, The Observer or anyone else is going to get online. So, you know, we figured, you know, you shift towards that to do a lot of advocacy as well. And uh, and it's been great. It's been Fair absolutely enough. great. As a guy, what is something you feel like you bring to Bell to Bell that your lovely fiance doesn't or Lauren doesn't? Facial hair. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, well, we're, we have very, we, you know, our, our skill sets are very complementary. Um, you know, I don't know if it's as a guy or anything else, but you know, like I, I do a lot of interviews for, for the, uh, for the site, especially when it comes with, uh, live interviews, um, recorded videos. Jesus. That's what I'm trying to say for YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that, you know, that's essentially what I bring most to, uh, what I bring most to the table, you know, Lauren writes uh, as well. Kristen does a lot of coordinating. Like we have very complementary uh, skills on that level. We use each other's strengths, right? That's that's the deal. Totally. As we look at wrapping this up, because the Zoom link seems to want to crap out all of a sudden, uh, the question I end all my interviews on, Warren, is with YouTube, with podcasting, with social media in general, we're all sort of going to live forever in some sort of way. So what is one video that you're like, or podcast or article in your case, that you're like, don't go back and watch that. I've grown a lot since then. And then what is one that you're like, if you want to know my body of work, go check that out. <laughs> uh, definitely don't go back and watch the first episode of the Mr. Warren Hayes show. Like, don't. Like, absolutely. 100% do not. Jeez, uh, Louise. It's, uh, there's so much stuff. Um, I think... Oh, there's a lot of stuff to go through, but I'd say, you know what, my, my, the, the interviews that I've done for Bell to Bells are fantastic. Um, I've talked with so many amazing, amazing women uh, over, uh, over the, 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 the past couple of years that I'm, I, I, you know, I think that's some of the best stuff that I've done is right there. Um, you know, my interviews, my, my interview with Yuka Sakazaki, is probably right up there with some of the some of my favorite stuff that I've done, um, and yeah, you know, it, it, it's hard to pick, but that's definitely one of them up there. Yes, fair enough. So as we look at wrapping this up, where can the good people find you and your content? Well, uh, the Mr. Warren Hayes show happens every Thursday night. I record it live actually every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, over on youtube.com slash Mr. Warren Hayes. You can subscribe there and that way you're, you're sure you won't miss a thing. Uh, then over Bell to Bells, uh, uh, look, you follow our, you go to our website at belltobells.com. That's B-E-L-L-T-O-B-E-L-L-E-S.com. Uh, you can also follow the YouTube channel where we have all of these wonderful interviews set up. You can go check that out, youtube.com slash Bell to Bells or on our Twitter account as well as Bell to Bells and my own Twitter account at Mr. Warren Hayes as well. It's well worth doing, guys. So if you guys like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It's Tom Talks Rubbish. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Talks Rubbish. Follow Bodyslam.net for my show uh, for and the Rest Watch podcast on Twitter. And subscribe to the Bodyslam.net on YouTube for my show, the Rest Watch podcast with Cassidy Haynes. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>